So we're going to be talking a little bit about Performance Max. Uh, my name is Bridget Healy. This is Andrew. Um, we're going to get started. We're going to go through some things that we've tested, um, kind of th some things that we've come across, and some ways that we think that we can leverage our own resources to obviously help performance. Awesome. Thank you, Bridget. <clears throat> so. I think a lot of people in this room are talking about Performance Max, specifically people that are kind of in the weeds of Google and uh, paid search and paid social advertising, and are what is this new type of campaign type, how do we optimize it, what types of things um, can be used. But before we kind of get there, we want to explain a narrative based on a lot of different documentation that Google has been rolling out um, of why Performance Max needed to exist in the first place. Performance Max became out because of performance marketers since. That is because we were only focused on the bottom of the funnel. The most prime intent types of users that are on the search and shopping networks or the retargeting users across specific social platforms that are the ones that are most primed to buy our products. We, it took us thousands of meetings with Google reps, I don't know if the Google reps are still here, to be able to be testing across YouTube or brand lift studies to show any sort of incremental type of conversion, or whatever conversion means, um, via investing display in YouTube. So what Google um, rolled out is essentially a mandatory option to have an omni-channel marketing experience. Investing um, your search, your shopping, display YouTube all into one encompassing tool um, that essentially does top the funnel, retargeting, bottom of the funnel, all in one campaign type. I think one of the most important things of, I think Patrick mentioned this in a few other presentations, talk about the messy middle. From the Think Google article from about two years ago, the, 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 mo there are multiple touch points needed to reach users across our busy and complicated lives. I'm even seeing on my presentation, I know it's not that um, informative, there are a lot of people looking on their Instagram or looking on their search, and it's just very difficult for anyone to concentrate at all. The fact is, what Google is trying to say is that the search, that old uh, AdWords, or the 2012 different keywords of like, that's where we're gonna be able to get incremental conversions and get more revenue. Those days are kind of to the past of ourselves, um, and we kind of need to invest in this omni-channel, full funnel marketing approach. As we kind of discuss this new omni-channel marketing experience, I think it's very important to understand that Performance Max is its own entity. It's not a replace of smart shopping. How many uh, client calls have across the agency of saying, oh, we, we tried smart shopping, uh, we tried Performance Max, it's not working like smart shopping, what's going on, what's not working? We have to take their approach that it's not doing exactly the same types of things as what smart shopping is doing or what search is doing, it's kind of doing something uh, across a broader, broader perspective. So to continue off of that, Performance Max being its kind of own entity that has to be kind of tested, studied, um, tried, it's highly automated, it's goal-based now, and it is full funnel exposure. So you're reaching people at the top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. Um, the good thing is that Performance Max kind of takes all the assets, all the things that you provide to it, like the feeds, the assets, the creatives, kind of all your audience signals, and it ties all that into its highly automated uh, machine learning, and that allows it to kind of show your ad to the ideal prospect at the ideal time on the ideal channel. Um, obviously, all of this kind of is based on the fact that you need to have good creative, good content, good messaging, um, and obviously different shopping experiences lead to different experiences with this kind of campaign type. So e-commerce, from our experience so far, e-commerce is better suited with Performance Max. We've run a few tests and we have a few tests where e-commerce is better suited. It is a little bit more volatile with lead gen at the time that we've been seeing. But obviously with everything with Google, everything's changing daily, there's optimizations, so it's always gonna be changing. Um, our recommendation is with lead gen, if you are going to be trying Performance Max, make sure that you are optimizing all the resources available to you, like your, obviously your first party data, making sure that you're having all the feedback, all the input, all of it's neat and tidy, and going back into the system for the best performance that you can provide the higher level feedback loop. And 
just to piggy off on uh, one of the most important things within Performance Max is the obsession with customer list and customer list data. Um, the first party data um, that was definitely important as relates to some sort of exclusions within traditional Google campaigns within search and shopping is now as extremely relevant towards Performance Max. Google, Google is utilizing our types of customers um, to try to learn who our future customers will be. There's a lot of characteristics and similarities across affinity audiences, across different search intent, as well as what, what types of websites others were browsing that kind of converted within our site. And giving that information is extremely important um, to making the machine being as powerful as possible. As Bridget alluded to before, we talk about all this goal-based machine learning, kind of talking to the machine, as well as making sure that our levers within, um, within what exactly we can give to them, whatever Google is giving us the opportunity to need to do, and if you look on this slide, you can see there are all different types of demographics you can be adding, different affinity audiences that Google may have to just waste money at to be testing. Uh, not to throw the, the black box at Google and blame Google at all, but there is some level of testing as relates to what types of new strategies, new, new types of core audiences can be utilized across all different campaigns, especially once we're already hitting our specific goals within our budgets. Google then kind of explores to see what they can be testing um, on that front and making sure that all that data, anything that we know from our affinity audiences, customer list, website visitors, making sure that's all set up properly um, is very important. Kind of along with that point, obviously, that Andrew just was saying, Performance Max, the narrative around it is that it kind of takes away a lot from the marketer. It makes it very easy if you're crunched for time, just plug all of it in and Google takes care of it all. Um, Sure, that is all well and, go well and good, but a lot of it is making sure that you're keeping up with it, you're optimizing kind of the creatives that you add to it, because creatives are a huge key in Performance Max and creatives will drive success. We've been talking about it a lot today, how good creative drives the purchase, it drives the conversion, it makes that person take the action that you want. Um, it just, it, it has the highest kind of attention rate and it just really has such a bigger impact when that creative is received well. So as much as Google could serve your ad to the ideal prospect on the ideal network at the ideal time, if you don't have the good creative there, it's not going to succeed. Um, there is also the option of the combinations report, which will provide kind of insight on what's performing well, but making sure that you have that high quality, high turnover creative that you can input into the ads is a key driver in success here. Um, and your messaging has to be really thought out. It has to be as targeted, as untargeted as you want to, but it needs to be directed and your message needs to be clear. And also just one additional point that uh, essentially the way Google AdWords was created kind of in 2012 when kind of uh, the new types of dashboards was built out. There was two description, uh, two headlines, two descriptions of dating myself. I'm not that old. The fact is that almost every day it seems like Google's giving us more opportunity to give logos, descriptions, automated as relates to what types of call to actions we're looking to be doing, videos, images that are still, images that are logo based, um, 15 different headlines. Now we have a short description, long descriptions. The fact is that, to Marvin's point, where is Marvin? Hope he's still here. That all the copy that we that we do is that rush of the eight different uh, semicolons of data worth of concentrations of matrices on. Microsoft Excel trying to figure out what best copy works, but no one even thinks about who are we, who we're targeting and what types of messaging can actually um, work well with them. And as much as um, I, th I think we alluded to the fact of that a lot of things are automated and there is levels uh, of Google's automation kind of taking things over, there are some things that we do have in our toolkit. The asset groups um, where you can kind of discuss different, um, as besides for the creatives, which you mentioned, of logos, descriptions, headlines, there is additional audience signals based on affinity audiences, based on customer lists, lookalikes, all those different, I guess, similar to audiences are going away as of last week. Um, but I think that that was kind of what we are initially as the agency, we kind of don't want to put our perspectives any too, too um, black and white on pieces of paper because things kind of, when we were crafting this presentation, um, one, one, one of the discussion points we're talking about is, that it's hard to be make a narrative that's too strong because things are just ever changing. But I still think it's insightful to understand of what things we can kind of work with the machine and change within the, our toolkit to be able to have best performance. Um, and I think that 
the most important thing, um, which is a little bit confusing, is that the specific feature in which we have the most amount of kind of input, that is asset groups, which is audiences, descriptions, all the different things we spoke about before, do not have reporting on an asset group level just yet. Um, we're hoping that the Google gods hear us and hopefully they give some asset group uh, reporting at some capacity, because I do think it would be very insightful as ways to say, okay, let's start with this asset group with this specific narrative of who these are the types of customers that are going to convert best and give us reporting uh, uh, on that area. However, for now, make sure you make, if you're going to be testing, make new campaigns so you can kind of see structured performance and reporting um, in an individualized set. And we do want to just outline three simple tests as ways to what we're doing in the agency. Um, I think we have a lot of e-commerce advertisers that were running a lot of smart shopping and making a lot of money. And there was kind of the stress of, okay, what do we do now? Um, the first testing point, which in some capacity, I don't like so much based on the fact of the messy middle. It's kind of the avoidance of what's going on of saying, okay, we're not ready to give you all the descriptions, we're not ready to give you the headlines, we're not ready to give you videos that are good or assets. So what can we do to give us the same type of performance we're getting on Performance Max? Getting to the original narrative we just spoke about, this is the, the test in which um, is most similar towards that being scared approach. Of like not, under, not reacting within Google's kind of change of ecosystem, um, but essentially with this specific testing point is we only give headlines and descriptions, um, similar to what we would be doing uh, on, on specific search um, campaigns, as well as giving the product feed, and ensure our product feed is well optimized as relates to um, different product titles and, and, and fields, which I think now across the industry, people are taking more attention towards Google Merchant Center and what types of options and availabilities we have there. Um, and essentially having Google uh, utilize those, specific, those minimum assets to kind of make sure we're mastering the bottom of the funnel as much as possible. A second testing point we've been working out is kind of like a middle of funnel specific audience test. So if you have these kind of target audiences that you know are pretty stable for your brand, you can build out your creatives, your messaging, even your product feed to a specific collection of those products that you want to really target with that specific audience. Um, and you just kind of create a highly targeted asset group. Actually, in this case, we do it on the campaign level. That way we can get the data on it. But you just create out this PMAX campaign that's specific targeted to that audience persona that you want to um, reach, and then you use those audience signals, the assets of the creative, the messaging, all to make it all tied up into that perfect storm um, to hit that consumer that has that interest. And the last type of test we've been running in the agency is the full social approach. The fact is we're giving ad copy, images, videos, and not the product video feed. And I think this is an important way as relates to trying to not brand awareness because brand awareness is not exactly what we're getting out. That we're thinking of back to the basics of marketing, of making sure that we're using the tools in which we have to reach customers that are probably just as bottom of the funnel as someone searching for those keywords, however, just at different touch points across their digital marketing journey. Um, essentially, these types, of, these types of creatives are a little bit difficult to make because you want to make sure that they're full funnel and exposure based. Um, exposure, not brand awareness, because the fact is that we want to make sure that they're kind of top of funnel, but they're not too esoteric where people can still drive action, understand what our products and uh, what our offer is, have them come to the site. We've seen some good success as relates to bringing people to the website and kind of better conversion rates than you would expect. I think this goes back to the narrative that top of the funnel, uh, or what we think only top of the funnel, types of campaigns are not necessarily worse uh, for conversions because of the fact is CPCs are less, sometimes there's even less um, competition in those areas. So it could be a good way for businesses to be kind of, okay, let's only take the product approach only for specific, um, for specific allocation of the budget and let's try to be testing top of the funnel across full social and maybe even utilize Google Performance Max as a entry point towards what's working um, on search and then utilize that across TikTok, across Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, whatever the in industries that utilize Google's machine categories as that gauge to see if a creative is good or bad and then kind of blitz it out to the rest of your channels. Okay. <laughs> 
So like a lot of things that we've been talking about today, automation is becoming a huge part in digital um, PPC advertising. It's kind of unavo unavoidable at this point. Um, and Performance Max is just another push in that direction. Um, a lot of the hesitation here is obviously due to the lack of reporting and kind of the lack of control. Um, but a Performance Max is just a peek into the future. And um, for those that are still hesitant to dive into all this, we hope that kind of these tests can ease you along with the process and make it a little less intimidating. Um, and obviously, like everything, we love a deliverable. So we did build out a, de a decision tree to kind of help you through this process of thinking, starting point, is there a bottom of funnel audience for this product? And taking kind of the journey through that um, from your point of view, Yes, you could either do, like we mentioned, the specific audience test or the product only test. If no, the social only test might be a good option to then bring you back to that. And then hopefully you will be able to answer yes and go down that other side. Um, so just kind of helping you take those direct steps um, and test out those, those opportunities. <laughs>